I am absolutely thrilled uh, to welcome someone who, quite honestly, is a heroine of mine, Yeonmi Park is an escapee from North Korea. Yes, North Korea. Uh, she and her mother escaped initially to China, then to South Korea. It's an incredible story. She's written a very moving and powerful memoir. It's called In Order to Live, A North Korean's Journey, A North Korean Girl's Journey to Freedom. Um, Yanmi, you have an incredible story. Thanks for coming on the podcast. I want to start by just asking you, you know, most Americans know nothing about North Korea. Uh, you lived it. You, uh, you were born um, in Haesan, I believe, uh, part of North Korea, right next to China. Can you talk a little bit about your life in North Korea? Um, and what is it that Americans need to know about what that world is really like? So when I was born in North Korea, uh, I had no idea that I was born in an oppressed country because we didn't even have a vocabulary for oppression. And uh, of course, we don't know the even existence of internet. We don't have even 24 hours electricity. I never even seen the map of the world. The regime told me that I was Kim Il-sung race, not Asian. And the North Korean calendar begins when Kim Il-sung was born, the, our first leader. So it is a completely different planet with a different common sense and history. Now, you said, Yanmi, I think you wrote somewhere that um, even the term love, in the sense that we understand it, affection between people, um, doesn't really exist in North Korea. Something that I think Americans would like have a hard time grasping, um, that love, I think you said, only exists in one specialized context. Talk about that. So I know when I came to America, people told me about Shakespeare and all about love. But in North Korea, the only love that we know and allowed to express is our love towards leaders and in a written form. My mom never told me that she loved me. No lovers in North Korea tell each other they love each other because we, one thing only we are allowed to love is the leader, not the other people ourselves. Now, when you talk about the dear leader, the, the head of North Korea, is it a cult of personality or is it a cult of ideology? And what I mean by that, is there like a, a, a Marxist doctrine that goes along with all this? Or is it just, I'm in charge, I'm the great leader, you should love me? Which one is it? They began the Marxist socialism and communism, but they took it to become a god. They took so much power from people. Eventually, they made themselves into a god. So they told us that they know how much hair that we have. Their body dies, like Kim jong Il's body dies, but he's like Jesus Christ. His spirit is with us forever. So if you go to North Korea, there are many, many eternal towers, so these uh, propaganda towers to people brainwash that, us that they live forever. So when I was in North Korea, even after my escape, I was even afraid to think because I was, I knew that the leader could read my thoughts. And I, so thought crime is a real thing in North Korea. You, can, you are not even free to think, not to mention free to speak. Thinking is not allowed. Wow, Yeonmi. I mean, you're describing something that I, you know, we read about in dystopian in George Orwell. I mean, I'm even thinking about when Solzhenitsyn wrote about the Soviet gulag. Uh, he was in a labor camp, but I don't even think he experienced this level of thought control. In a certain sense, what Solzhenitsyn says is he says, my body was captive, but my mm -hmm. mind was free. Um, and I think it was partly because he had been exposed to pre-Soviet Russia. Um, mm -hmm. But you're describing someone who I think was, you're describing a nation of prisoners. So my question mm -hmm. to you is, how did you and your mom recognize that, wow, you know, we don't have to live this way. There are other people in the world that live differently. What made you want to get out? How did you get the ability to see that there is a better way? I think that's a good question. Like if you read the animal farm by George Orwell, the first generation knew by when the new animals come, they don't even know what the life could be alternatively look like. So that was my life. I never knew life could be different. And the only way, reason why we made escape from North Korea is if you see them during the 9-11, those men flee from the burning building, right? They just have no option because we are so starving. 
And the, even if we didn't escape, we are going to die from starvation. Luckily, we are living in the border town of North Korea. So if at night we are looking at China, they had the electricity coming out. So that's what I thought. If I go where the lights were, I could find something to eat. So it, it wasn't like we knew that if we escape, you're going to find food or there's America. It was more like jumping out of the burning building and see what happens. And thankfully we, we are alive. <laughs> This is unbelievable. When we come back, I'm going to talk to um, Yeonmi Park about the escape out of North Korea, her experiences in China, and how she eventually got to South Korea and finally makes her way to the United States.